Derivatives. It's a concept you come across quite a bit when dealing with the markets, but if you're only used to mutual funds and stocks, it can seem a daunting task to understand the concept. Hi, I'm Pratiksha from the Investor Relations team at Minance, and in a series of videos, I'll be explaining to you what derivatives are, their history, their usage, and their types. A derivative is defined as a financial security whose value is derived from a certain underlying asset. Now, before understanding derivatives, let's delve into some history. The earliest reference to derivatives in India was in 320 BC in Kautilya's Arthashastra. Kautilya, or Chanukya as he's, as he's more commonly known, was the chief advisor to Chandragupta Maurya and played a pivotal role in establishing the Mauryan Empire. Now, in his Arthashastra, Kautilya describes a pricing mechanism for crops to be harvested at some point in the future. Now, he uses this method to pay farmers in advance, hence structuring a true forwards contract. A forwards contract is the simplest form of derivative. It is a private agreement between two parties to buy and sell a certain asset at a certain specified price in, at some point in the future. Now, this is an over-the-counter transaction, which is basically a one-on-one -on -one transaction between two institutions or individuals. For example, let's say that Mr. A is interested in real estate and thinks that a plot of land owned by Mr. B will increase in value in three months' time. So A enters into a contract with B to buy the land in three months at the current market price. B is happy to make the deal since he doesn't care or believe in a future price increase. If the price of the land actually does go up in three months, A can now buy it at the initially agreed upon price and pocket a nice profit. On the other hand, if the price doesn't move or actually ends up falling, A makes a loss while B gets a higher price for his land. Forward contracts, however, do come with certain inherent risks. Firstly, their contracts entered into by two private entities without a third party regulator to ensure that the contract terms are honored. This results in default risks as well as regulatory risks. Secondly, these contracts are customized and unique, hence making them hard to trade. This results in liquidity risks. Due to such inherent risks, over time, futures contracts came to the fore, and we'll be discussing that in the next video. Until then, please follow us so that you are updated when new videos come up. My name is Pratiksha, and thank you for watching.